Steve had people tell him all his life that uh, he couldn't play major college football. First of all, he wasn't big enough. You get out of high school at 160 pounds, and, and he's not slow, but I'd say for a running back, he might have average speed, and his height is too short. You know, they'd all his life they've told him, well, you can't do this, and you can't do that, and he's one of those guys that doesn't believe what everybody tells him. And basically, all he needed was the opportunity. What he's done with his opportunity. Bartolo enters the 86 season as the nation's leader in career rushing yards among active players. He's already gained nearly 3,400 yards, but still has 11 games remaining in his career. All this from a kid who's just 5 foot 9, 190 pounds. He is a lot bigger uh, than what he looks like when he's got his football uniform on because he's a very well-developed uh, football player and he's getting every use uh, out of his body that he can because he works out year-round in the weight room. Steve Bartalo was a walk-on at Colorado State in 1982, Leon Fuller's first year as head coach. He began his career as a scout team quarterback, a job a notch below being a sparring partner. He didn't fit into Fuller's pro-style passing offense, so he was switched to fullback. It wasn't until Fuller ran out of fullbacks that the Frog became a prince. It was the third game of the 1983 season, the renewal of the Colorado-Colorado State rivalry. He was sent in late and still managed to grind out nearly 65 yards. He's been a fixture at fullback ever since. Played in only nine games that freshman year and became the first walk-on in Division I history to rush for over 1,000 yards. He had set his straight-ahead will and desire in motion. For the next three years, he would gain thousands of yards, eight and ten at a time. For the next three years, he would give his linemen the credit for the TDs and the yardage gain. He had established an unselfish, persistent style. He doesn't slip tackles. He takes dead aim. My goals for this year are the same that they've been since I first got up here, and that's to give 100% every time I'm out on the field. And I do believe that if I go out there and give 100%, it's going to help our team, and it's going to rub off on some of the other players, and they're going to give 100%, and we're going to go out and win some ball games. In 1985, Bartalo ran over and through enough would-be tacklers to finish ninth nationally in rushing. The 85 season also marked the third straight year the undersized overachiever led the Western Athletic Conference in rushing, Steve being only the third runner in WAC history to accomplish such a feat. With 19 100-yard games in the books and 1986 waiting in the wings, Bartalo stands on the verge of joining an elite group in terms of career 100-yard games. Given a typical Bartalo year, the gritty fullback could run his way right into the top 10 in NCAA history for 100-yard games. He would stand alongside guys like Marcus Allen, Joe Morris, Tony Dorsett, and Ed Marinero. Most runners are like Maserati, sleek and quick. Bartalo, on the other hand, is more like a Mack truck. Check under the hood and you'll find that this one-man convoy runs on heart and desire not size and speed. Get them up! Let's go! Get them up! Probably the thing that's outstanding about Steve Bartello is that uh, he's not the flashy type of guy. He doesn't have all the 
basic skills and uh, abilities that a lot of other people have. Uh, but at the end of the football game, he's going just as hard as when he started because he doesn't quit and he doesn't give up. And that's the thing that probably separates him from most of the other people in the country.